Folks, the month of September is about innovation and technology in the conversations that I'm having with different people and it's been very enlightening for me. Harold Robbins Tumusime is a husband and father of three. He's passionate about his faith in Jesus. He's also passionate about family as well as efficient use of clean energy. He's an electrical engineer by training and uh, he will, he has worked in different telecom sectors and for over 15 years has experience in there. He has served in the entire ecosystem of the telecoms apart from working with the regulator. From network planning, networking with the UTL, managing projects to network infrastructure in Uganda, Malawi and Zambia. And most recently, he has been with American Towers, Uganda, doing power analysis and managed the first pilot project to deploy solar hybrid systems at the telecom sites. Solar is deployed at over 1,000 telecom sites around the country. And currently, Harold is on a quest to have as many commercial and industrial power users to appreciate and embrace the use of clean energy options, particularly solar energy. Now, Harold is the CEO of an energy company called Enamast, and he's also an author of a book on solar coming up in 2022. I sat down with him and had a conversation about this innovation and this technology around solar energy, and this man is knowledgeable enough. Let us see what we can be able to learn from him. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Life Signatures episodes are brought to you by AfricanBooks.com, which is an online ebook platform that seeks to broadcast the African Christian voice to the world. As such, they have become a hub for African content, connecting African writers and publishers with a global reading audience. Publishing your books on their site is free and easy, with authors having full control over their content and the price they choose to sell at it. I was personally blown away by the concept that AfricanBooks.com is coming up with. Things like no content from their site or their app is going to be run on laptops so that people can easily copy. In other words, your content as a writer is restricted from digital multiplication or digital copying. So you remain intact with your information. And that concept that I got so blown away with was the fact that in some time to come, in due course, AfricanBooks.com will be starting to announce African Writer of the Year. In other words, there will be competitions in all African countries to figure out who is the best published author. And I also fell in love with the fact that countries can actually compete against each other. You can have African authors going at it after each other. And your book as an author will be reviewed and have some stars and recommended upon that particular platform. The thing is that it's an answer to Amazon.com. You know, with Amazon, what happens? You've got to have an account in the Americas or whatever, or in Europe before you can get paid as an author. But here, 
the local currency is in play and the local means of getting paid are in play. So to get started, go to africanbooks.com as an author or as a publisher and even as a reader if you wanted to read your African favorite authors. Enjoy. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, whatever place it is that you're tuned on to Life Signatures podcast. It's a Wednesday, and being a Wednesday, we have an opportunity to have a conversation with uh, people who are exuding their life signatures, who are passionate about one thing in life or another. And this month, we decided to talk about innovation and technology. And that ranges in very many areas of very many facets. My friend, every time we talk about tech, people normally think about coding and programming alone. But you and I know that uh, it's it's uh, it's a vast uh, array of things that uh, we need to talk about. So, how are you doing this morning? I'm very well, thank you. Yes. So, what exactly makes you tick in terms of what you're doing? Yeah. Thank you very much, Lawrence. I am I, an energy enthusiast. Mm. So what makes me tick is energy. Yeah. I I had the privilege of studying electrical engineering mm-hmm. at Makere and I have been working in the in the industry of telecommunications for the last almost fifteen years. Yeah. But most recently, the last two to three years, I have been quite focused on solutions that that look to optimize the way people use energy. Right. So that got me into looking at uh, renewable energy and, and how how renewables are used. Mm-hmm. And I have gotten to to the point where I am now running. Uh, a small company that is that's called Enamast. Enamast yeah. looks to provide solutions that optimize mm. the use of energy. What 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 have what I have been fascinated with mm. in the recent past is solar energy. Okay. And so when I was doing my research on solar energy, the one fact that blew my mind was that the sun radiates sufficient energy in a single hour mm. to power the entire world for a year. In one hour? In a single hour. The entire universe? Yes. For one year? The entire earth. The entire earth, sorry. The entire earth can be powered by the sun in a single hour. The single energy this in a single hour, the total amount of energy that we get from the sun is more than enough mm. to power the entire earth for a single for a full year and so that got me really really mm. interested mm. so before you can even go to, get into the energy world and innovating in the energy world you said you did electrical engineering yes I did it is was that a passion or just <laughs> academics? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was it was divinely ordained. Yeah. Because uh, my mother is a medical practitioner. She's a nurse. Right. And I was always She still practices. Yes, she still practices. Okay. And I was always intrigued. Mm. By medicine, mm. how much even you know people who are a lot more established than her would defer to her mm. for you know for their health issues, mm. and you know when she's speaking to them, when she's taking care of them, they you listen. Ca- they listen, <laughs> they listen because it's life or death. Yeah. So I thought I would do medicine. 
Mm. But as God would have it, when I did my all levels, mm. I had passed the sciences with the very same grade. And so I knew when I asked for physics, chemistry, and biology, I would get it. Mm. <laughs> Shock on me. Mm-hmm. My biology teacher, who I actually had a very good relationship with, mm. refused. She said he will do mathematics better. Give him physics, chemistry, and mathematics. Wow. So, I ended up doing mathematics. But you could have said no, right? I could have said no. It's just that you respected the Yes, the I respected the teacher's uh, call, mm. and I wanted to remain... I wanted to remain in the, in the school where I was, mm-hmm. and they were the, that is what they were offering me. So I said, fine, mm-hmm. let me go ahead and, and, and do it. You consulted with Mama? Yes, and I she did. she said it's okay. And she, she said, she blessed it. She said, I mean, if that's what the people who have been teaching you uh, think about it, mm-hmm. then go ahead. Let, let's come there for a minute, because I think it's a very critical point. Mm-hmm. Very many kids... <clears throat> just make cho- choices and there is no input from, from someone else. Mm. In your school, what was unique about it as in your relationship with your teacher? Were you guys few? How, how did it come to the level that this guy, this teacher was able to speak positively into your life? Especially in transition to uh, in your education, in your academics. She, it was a she actually. Yeah. She, was, she was one of those who took keen interest in in her students. In her students. Right. So she, when, when, uh, when she was consulted mm. about my wanting to do biology, mm. it was a decision that she took that was informed. Yeah. So even when we had that discussion with her, mm. there were things that she told me mm. that I would probably have had challenges with. Mm. in biology mm. because she knew the aspects in biology mm. that that I was good at yeah and those that I probably were going to struggle with yeah so she said no from from what i know the, you are go, you you will excel if you did something that is closer to the physics which you which which you are already going to do and the chemistry which you already do well yeah there are aspects of biology where I know you will struggle. Yeah. But so mathematics would be, the, you know, the best way for you to go. Meanwhile, at math you are not struggling. At math I was not struggling. Mm. At math I was not struggling. At chemistry I was not struggling. Mm-hmm. At biology I was not struggling. Mm. I actually used to struggle a little on physics, mm. but I needed the physics mm. for any science combination. Mm. So I knew I had to do the physics. Mm. So that's 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 how. And the reason why I say it was. Divine. Divine. Yeah. Is because much later in life, yeah, I discovered hospitals are not my thing. Yeah. I have a Whereas really your, your, your role model was mom yes. and medicine and uh, being a nurse or being a doctor. That's what you wanted. Yes. Sometimes as kids, we our environment normally shapes our decisions. Sure. You see, if your father, if your father is a pilot, you want to become a pilot. Yeah. If he's a teacher, sometimes you also want to become mm-hmm. a teacher. So for you, you wanted to become like an authority in in the medical world. Yeah. But then you found out this, this is not for me. I found out later that God had engineered this thing <laughs> because hospitals mm. are a real challenge for me. Yeah. I have a real, real phobia. I have, a, I have a real, real phobia. Yeah. I have fainted yeah. on four different occasions in, in a hospital. hospital. Yeah. And you were just okay? Yes, I was okay. I had the four times that I, that I have collapsed in hospital, I was there to see Six, sick uh, people. Patient. Yeah, I was there to see a patient. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Sorry for laughing. Yeah. So, so it's it's it gets to you, right? Yep. And yep. you can't handle it. I I just can't handle it, and it doesn't take long. You know, I could be there for ten, fifteen minutes, and I start feeling woozy. You know, I start feeling woozy, and yeah. Mm. Mm. 
So that tells us that um, at, at some point in time we also need to listen to our own capacities, yes. our own dispositions. Yes. So it will be a total failure for you to have done the biology and the, or so on and end up in, in, uh, in a medical world which but someone else will say ah but you can get used to it and so on <laughs> but thank god you had an alternative yes yeah yes yes i did have an alternative mm-hmm. and so i did electrical engineering which you loved uh, which i really loved and mm-hmm. uh i particularly loved uh telecoms mm-hmm. because uh i i uh, it just resonated with me mm-hmm. the fact that you know you you get to understand how how a signal from here is being propagated mm. and you are able to communicate with someone who's thousands of miles away yeah. so that that really resonated with me and i was mm. really intrigued mm. and so I, I i i i pursued that i pursued that for for for, for a while yeah. and and uh, and yes i was i was i was fortunate to work with uh, the telecom companies, and then I worked with the tower companies. I worked as a contractor. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 as far as the telecom industry, apart from working with the regulator, I think I have, uh, I have worked in the entire universe mm-hmm. as far as uh, telecoms, uh, telecoms is concerned. The only place you haven't worked is the <coughs> regulatory yes. office. Correct. Okay. okay. Yes. Yes. And therein, um, <laughs> A couple of years ago, we, I, I got into um, looking at how 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 are the, how how are the, how how is the how are the the telecom how is the telecom infrastructure yeah. sustained in terms of energy mm-hmm. and how how can the tower companies which own the towers mm-hmm. how are they you know being uh, wise in terms of you know optimizing the way the energy is being used mm. so yeah, for for the sake of, of of a guy who is totally green yes in in this telecom world let, let us explain these towers and so on. yes uh, because we're talking about not the normal the the traditional telephony where there were poles and wires yes right we're talking about Wireless technology, yes, isn't it? We are talking about wireless technology. So yeah. the 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 basic infrastructure that you require mm. for the all this wireless technology mm-hmm. requires that you have a mast. Yeah, you have a a, a, a telecom mast mm-hmm. where the antennas that propagate the signal are installed. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure many of you have seen this. Uh, the, Red and white masts all mm. over, which, which have antennas. Do they have to be put in a? Do, do you do you do some kind of research? You know, yes. Where exactly it yeah. needs to be placed? I, I I had very interesting stories when I was with uh, Uganda Telecom some years ago. Yeah. Um, because I used to do the planning of the network. Yeah. So I used to get all these calls from people saying, "Oh, my father has a mast up here." <laughs> <laughs> Can you bring us a must? Can you do this? Yeah. We, will, we will give you a good commission. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I had to keep educating people that we actually have software and technology that we use mm. to find us the best, best suited location. locations mm. to serve a particular area. Mm. So like right now, we are in Tinder. Mm-hmm. But you will not serve in Tinder mm. with having just a single mast at the church mm-hmm. because the person down in the down valley in the valley yes will complain mm. that they don't have service mm. so what will happen is you will put something at the church yeah and all the people around will say service is, is good pi- perfect but then when you get down to the valley mm. they they'll complain be, they'll be complaining mm. And then you have to now rework mm. and find another location there, mm. or switch and put and rem- and and, 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 and the yes, and instead of having one serve the church, mm. have have it there mm. and engineer it to serve both 
the valley, the valley and, the and, then, and then the mm. people at the top. Mm. So that's that, that's how I got to. That's uh, that is how I was I was uh, working uh, in, so in the telecoms. Each must yes, twenty four seven. Yes, it has to be powered. Correct. How do you guys power it? So each must has to be powered twenty four hours. Yeah, because the signal cannot go down. Yeah. So it's a lot of power, isn't it? It's a lot it, of energy. It's it's quite a lot of energy when you look at the totality of, of all the masts of all the masts that yeah. we have in the country that yeah. are close to four thousand right now. Yeah. So what happens is four thousand in terms of the entire in, telecoms yes, infrastructure entire, yes, for all the telcos. For all the telcos. The four thousand. Yes. Are they enough? They are not enough. They are not enough. They are not enough. Okay. The reason that they are not enough is because the areas which are very poorly covered right now, mm. which need more. The other reason is the way technology has been developing mm. is that the distance between the masts mm. has been shrinking mm. because of how we how the technology has developed. So mm. if you needed to just call somebody, mm. you didn't need as much in terms of uh, infrastructure, if you, if you just had the, the voice service. Mm, yeah, I hear you. So when you start putting in the data, data services... video, all those things. Uh, yes, it means that now you are working at... You are working with technologies which require the points of, the points of service to be closer, mm. to be much closer. Mm. So the, 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 the points of service are going to grow. They are going to grow as the technology goes. Even the points of service are going to grow. So all these have to be powered, mm. and it is very costly. What do they use? To it power? is very costly. So you have all the energy, all the energy sources mm. that that we have. Mm. We have grid power. Mm. Grid power. Mm-hmm. So grid power is umeme. Umeme, yes. Um, Electricity, yes. Mm-hmm. So we have grid power. Which is Ubeme, then you have thermal power, which is the generators. Mm. And then recently, uh, two, three years ago, we started having solar mm. introduced at these places. Mm. Um, we have some trials that are going to be done, mm. maybe during early next year of wind, mm. wind power, mm-hmm. but those haven't really taken off. Mm-hmm. But it is really the introduction of all these other. Uh, energy sources is was to try and see how to manage the high cost of this of this energy and also to have sources which are a lot more reliable mm. for for the person who 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 who's trying to make sure that this this service is available twenty four seven. So, if you and only it's actually a critical service, it is a critical service. Yeah. It is a critical service, and so because. You have banks mm, yeah, using mm, this service. Mm, you have all these. You know how mobile money has has, mm, has really taken off. Mm, so if you don't have the service, you can't mm, do the mobile money. Mm, so you have all sorts of services that have piggybacked mm, onto that technology, mm, and so you have to make sure that it is always available. So that. That that got us innovating, and mm. we started using you know different sources mm. to see how we can supplement um, the power that we already have, mm. and also reduce the cost mm. of, of of energy. Because um, if you can look at it and see and imagine somebody who is having to fuel three thousand plus generators yeah. with fuel yeah. every single maybe a week or something week, yeah. And now that, that, that and you're you're doing that. By the time you're doing that, the fuel had not gone up by a hundred percent. No, it hadn't. Yeah, it hadn't. So right now, it's even much, much more expensive. For Correct. Them. Correct. Yeah, it's much more expensive. So when I when I when I when I started thinking about um, these solutions, um, I, I I decided to. To start thinking out of even out of my telecom box yeah. that, that I was that I, that I had been in, yeah. and looking at at 
SMEs are looking at industry and saying these guys must be grappling with the similar problems mm -hmm. and for some of them it might even be uh, worse yeah. because they could be in an area where generator is their only source. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I got to I got to, I got to you know doing my, doing some research mm. understanding mm. how people are doing um, uh, uh, managing the energy like in, in, in industry mm. in, in, in in SMEs and that kind of thing mm. and so that's 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 what took me on the path to to, to launching out and and, and, and doing uh, a lot of uh, research and, and trying to understand mm. how solar works and how we can use it to really mm. uh, optimize the way uh, industry particularly mm -hmm. use the energy because when I'm speaking to somebody who who runs um, say an industry or runs a commercial establishment yeah. um, I, I, I try to get them to understand how they use their energy yeah you, you, their, their unique needs. Yes. Right. Yes. Whether it's a it's a home. Yeah. Or a, an industry or a small organization. Yes. Their their needs vary from one person to another. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Their needs vary, and even their usage varies. Mm. So you will find somebody is is in an industry and they don't have a choice. But to work uh, late mm. because the 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 raw materials maybe get in mm. uh, late mm. and then they work they work safe from so you have you have industries where like tea like like the tea industry yeah the plant the plant will start consuming the most energy towards lunch and into the afternoon and evening because the the leaf mm. will come in in the morning mm. they have to separate it they have to, and then and then the real production will start happening mm -hmm. a little later mm -hmm. in the day mm -hmm. and then you have industries where when the machines go on the motors do not go off mm -hmm. so they run the mm -hmm. plant 24 hours a day mm -hmm. so that so I, I I I I get them to I usually I usually when I'm speaking to somebody who has you know at an establishment which which uses quite a bit of energy I yeah. I want them to understand how they use their energy and how how the energy is how the energy consumption curve is for them mm -hmm. and also to understand how they are built for that energy. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you have three portions in terms of how the energy is consumed and built. So yeah. you have between the hours of 6 p.m. and midnight, mm -hmm. that's when energy is most expensive. Mm. Yes. Because the demand is highest. Mm. The demand is highest. And so what happens is that, that those are the hours they call peak time. Between six six p.m. and twelve midnight. Whoa. So in you my, have my 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 lay mind. I was thinking that's when everyone is asleep. <laughs> six p.m. to twelve midnight. That is that that is the time. So if an industry is going to have to work during that time, they know the energy cost is going to be high. Mm. When it comes to mi after midnight to 6 a.m., mm. that is off peak. Mm. So that's usually the, co the rates are, mm. are, are quite low. Mm -hmm. And then the most interesting time for me is what they call the shoulder, which is 6 a.m. Mm. to 6 p.m. Mm. Now, 80 to 90 percent of, 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 of energy users use the energy during shoulder mm. it's it's a small percentage that the actually percent that the, yes, that the 20 percent are the ones that use the most yeah the 20 percent are the ones that use yes the the the, 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 the peak and off peak yeah but 
the bulk mm. of the way people use energy is between six and and, and, and six. six, yeah, six. Eight, and so and six, yeah. exactly. And so when when they when I get them to to to, to realize that, and also look at their bills, mm-hmm. they realize that sixty to seventy percent of their energy bill mm-hmm. is during the shoulder. Mm-hmm. So then I go. If that is the case, can we substitute mm-hmm. some portion? Of mm-hmm. that energy mm-hmm. with another source, mm-hmm. which is always available, mm-hmm. which you can you can harness and then generate your own energy, mm-hmm. and you're not you are not you are not too worried about what is going to happen in terms of the rate, mm-hmm. in terms of the cost of the diesel. Mm-hmm. You know that you are getting a cushion. Mm-hmm. By generating your own energy, mm. so that's when you know we started. We started looking at designing solutions that are solar-based, mm. and saying, "Look, you have an endowment of the sun." Yeah, especially here in the yes in this in this region exactly. where yes. the sun is always overhead. Correct. I mean, it's only it's only an equatorial region which has twelve hours of sun. Yeah, guaranteed mm. all year round. Mm. Anywhere else. You don't get mm. as many as twelve, mm. and so, it's 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 rich. Yes, yeah, it is. It is even on the days when it's partly cloudy or raining. Yeah, yeah. sunlight is there. Yeah, and as far as solar technology is concerned, sunlight is what is required. It's not really the intensity. Mm. It doesn't need to be hot. Mm. Yes. Actually, it's just the the the, the light of the yes, sun. Yes, that's it's it. just the light of the sun. So it could be cloudy and chilly, yeah. but as long as the, the the light of the sun is out there, solar is working. Solar is working. Now, even before we can go deep, there is this. There is this. In my thinking, there is this thinking that people normally have about solar, mm. which I feel is totally different from what you're doing. When you talk about solar, people think of getting a solar lamp you know basically buying solar gadgets mm. and that's for them solar solution is that what you're talking about no it's totally different what it's you're totally talking. different yes. I'm, I'm, I, I am i am can i say i want i want to appeal to the big boys yeah so the solar lamp and the solar lantern is 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 something that we need to have, especially for those people where they don't have coverage of the grid, mm. or they have very poor coverage of the grid. Mm. They need to have it for lighting and mm. and, and, and and having light basically in, in in their premises. Yeah. But what I'm looking at is people who are hemorrhaging with the high cost of of the energy sources that they use currently. Yeah. And that are not optimized, mm. that are not optimized, that have not taken full advantage of technology. And mm. and the other thing that I notice with solar is people for a long time have known that you know that's why they they they, they, they reverted to only the solar lamp and and and, and the solar lanterns, lanterns. Mm. because they thought you know what. This thing is very expensive. I can't. Mm-hmm. I can't even get into there. Mm-hmm. But the way we are trying to to develop the solutions, yeah. we work with mm-hmm. whoever it is and mm-hmm. and develop the solution in such a way that look, the cost of a kilowatt of a solar module fifteen twenty years ago was. Upwards of seventy dollars. Whoa! Today, it's less than a dollar. Whoa! And the biggest component in the solar system is the solar module, the solar panel, basically. Yeah. So, the cost of the solar panels has really, really come down. What, what was the what was the cause of the high cost back then? The high cost was due to. Uh, was really technology 
same thing that we we do with uh, with computers long ago they used to be very expensive yes and today you have a three laptops four laptops in a house <laughs> yes <laughs> yes yeah yes um the thing the thing with with the it, similarly with, with solar what happened was the technology hadn't really been fully mm. developed mm-hmm. and mm. and what happened was the US developed the technology mm-hmm. Germany mm-hmm. is one of the countries that really developed uh, the market mm. because at one point I think it was 99 to 2000 the government of, of Germany went all out and said, "Look, we are putting huge incentives for anybody who wants mm. to deploy a solar system." Mm. I mean, it became an agenda. For it them. became an agenda for them. Yeah. So then the Chinese mm. saw that wow opportunity opportunity. Mm. So they started mass producing mm. for that market. Mm. As they mass produced for that market, the Japanese also got interested and, and mm. did, did did something similar. Mm. The U.S. have also it also picked up there, yeah. but so it was it was really a, a global a global effort because mm. if we didn't have the tech that mm. was developed in the U.S. The US yeah. and then the market that was developed from Europe in Germany yeah. and the Chinese who went out and mass produced this yeah. would still be very far. Yeah, would still be very far. Mm. So those are the key factors that actually led to the cost of, of, of the solar panels coming down. Mm. Now, the other challenge that, the only challenge that we still have yeah. in the solar market is the storage. The storage, which is the batteries. Mm. Now, for a small home system or a small uh, system that is not more than, say, uh, that is not that is not powering a lot of equipment. Yeah. Because I don't want to get into the sizes in terms of kilowatt and that yeah, kind yeah. of thing. But yeah. that is not powering a lot of things. Mm. Or that you absolutely require to be on all the time, mm. like in the telecoms mm. uh, the space. Must, yeah. Mm. There you have to have storage. Mm. But if it is going to be a big system. Mm. Technology has we have developed the technology now that you don't need the storage. You can collect the solar mm. and use it as you collected, mm. as you have collected it. Meaning that the the batteries which are still at slightly higher cost that have not yet come down, mm. which will actually come, which will come down maybe in the next five to ten years. But mm. right now. As far as storage is concerned, mm. it's the biggest hindrance mm. to solar right now. Mm. The solar panel is not has, a problem. It's anymore. not a problem. The cost has really, really come down. Yeah. So the systems that are being deployed are all over Europe, all mm. over uh, North America. Mm. Uh, they are they're, they're called grid tied systems. So what happens is somebody puts up the solar. Mm. And the governments have put legislation in such a way that when they when you install solar say on your premises, mm-hmm. when you're not there using the solar, mm-hmm. you can sell it back to the grid. Mm. So what happens? You, you 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 sell the energy. Yes, you sell your energy that you're not using. So your solar becomes a money making. Correct. Go. Correct. So in in many countries out there people are selling. People are they are they are putting up this system and they're ending up being net net sellers. Mm. Because when they when they look at the little they, they've used from the from the grid mm. compared to what they are selling mm-hmm. they they have a net profit. Mm. They have a net profit. So, um, can we do that here? Is that <laughs> what you are up to? <laughs> <laughs> we we want to do it. Yeah. It requires us to do what they call net metering. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they, I, I, would there be need for I, government policy? Yes. 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 I yeah. know. I know some people who are 
looking into the legislation for that mm. to see that it is something that is considered mm. and implemented. So I think as far as Uganda is concerned, mm. timeline timeline could be even as soon as 12 months, but oh. that is a very optimistic one. Yeah, you are not in control of that. Fully, yes. So you can't necessarily That's a say. very optimistic one. Yeah. Yeah, but... But but it's a thing. Yes. It's a thing it is. A, it eventually is. you will see it happening. Yes, yes, yes. So solar becomes... We are not just consumers. Uh-huh. We, we now become... We, we start gaining from it. Correct. Correct. Oh. Correct. It's exciting times. Yes. Right. It is. It is. So it, it's really exciting times. And it is really the time for people to get educated, for yeah. people to understand yeah. what it can do for them, mm. and also to understand that, as opposed to what they thought many years ago, that this is expensive things, mm. it is only for the high flyers, mm. no. Mm. And also for the, the people who are very heavy consumers, to know that they actually have options in mm. terms of, you know, how they can alternate mm-hmm. their, their, their their energy mm-hmm. and have some and have some alternatives mm-hmm. whereby they are not held hostage eh, yeah. by whoever the other producers whoever the other providers are so yeah. you're not held hostage by Omeme mm-hmm. because maybe tomorrow there is uh, load shedding like you saw the yes, message yesterday exactly. right <laughs> and there was actually load shedding yesterday yes so you're not held hostage by road shedding. Mm. You're not held hostage by the fact that oh, we are now because the the incentives are, are not there. We are going to hike the rate. You're not held hostage by that. Mm. Then the people who are using a lot of diesel are also not held hostage by the you know the huge hikes. Let me ask you this interesting question. You had the, the, the other day the president talking about electric cars. Yes. That, uh, of course, I don't know uh, what to say, but people are very skeptical. At some point in time, we, we're going to get there. Yes. Do you see uh, solar playing a, a, a part in that field of electric cars and all these things? It already is. Whoa. It already is. We, they are already uh, cars that have been developed that have replaced so in 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 the in the technology of uh, of the solar panels mm. there are so many different types of designs of panels that are being churned out mm. and they are what they call thin film mm-hmm. panels mm-hmm. so these thin film panels are have been designed in such a way that you not you are not going to have you know the the heavy panel which you see on people's roofs. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's 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 a very thin film. It is it is as thin as as, as a sheet of paper. The the analogy is same thing with the microchip. Correct. That thing used to be so huge. I don't, I don't know if you remember seeing a a five MB disc <laughs> being loaded in a truck <laughs> some years back. Looks so weird. Yes. So the same thing with, with, with solar. Exactly. The panels are bulky. Yes. But now when you talk about cars, you need something that is chic, exactly. you know, something that is presentable. Exactly. That's where the thin films come in. Yes. So the thin films have, have, have been developed mm. and there are car manufacturers out there. Um, there, are, there are people who have out, they, they have really gone out of their way to, to focus on this. Mm whereby they have replaced the roof and, say, the back of the car, mm. even the front, mm. the bonnet, mm. all that it's, it's solar. Is, is, just, is just now solar. It's just solar panels that mm. are generating the energy mm. that's powering going the into car. the battery mm. and powering the car. So we do have, we do have this technology out there and it's, it's, uh, it's coming. It's coming. So the president is not too far fetched to say. Not too far fetched. Yeah. But you see, for him, he's talking about electrical. Oh, okay, but solar can also generate electricity. Yeah. Then. Because yeah. an electrical car is a battery on wheels. That's basically what it is. Yeah. It's a battery on wheels. Yeah. The battery is what powers the car. Mm. 
Yeah. So, right now, the cars are being powered by the batteries, but mm. the battery has to be charged. Yeah. Meaning when the battery goes down, they plug it into uh, a charger, a just, charger like a phone. just like a phone. Mm. But what what the solar car manufacturers are doing, mm. they are saying, look, chargers are not everywhere. Mm. But as you go, mm. you can charge the battery mm. with the sun which is abundant. So for us who are actually in, in, in the in the what, what do you call our weather um, equatorial, equatorial uh, uh, weather yes we should be the market that is correct that they are targeting so when the president is talking about electrical cars and we are bashing him we are, <laughs> we are the ones who are un, uninformed isn't it very true very true oh. I mean it would work tremendously for us because you see even the distances that we we look at here. People are designing cars that are going 700 kilometers mm. on a single mm. charge. Mm. 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 Now, mm. 700 kilometers, you have traversed the entire Uganda. That's Arua yes. and back, I think. Correct. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you are able to have the cars... Uh, we did. We definitely would be a good market for for for, for this kind of technology. Because then, you know, we we are not grappling with uh, Let me tell with you, fuel. Fuel has really, and I don't think it's gonna go down. That's something that we might not know, but it is. It is. It is a big factor right now. Mm. I don't know about you, but when you're on the roads, people are not. The jams are not as as, no. as, as they used to no, be. No, no, they are not. They are not necessarily driving. Mm. People are maximizing their times and so on. So True. an electrical car, mm. let's break it down for a solar panel, a solar powered car. Yes. Let's break down for the guys. Mm. Where will be the expense? Will be in the initial purchase. Yes. Might it be more expensive than the normal car? Yes. Right now. Like I said, the battery technology mm, is the, the is the hindrance is is still quite a hindrance. Yeah, but um, it is it is going down. It is going down because right now the solar the the, the electrical vehicles mm. are still say thirty percent more mm. costly mm. than a new mm. than a new. Uh, internal combustion engine car mm. but the, with all these technologies as we get as we, as we start having mass consumption mm. the cost will come down you envisage a situation where it will be common to have all this uh, yes uh, this uh, solar panel solar powered cars and I do I really I really envisage a situation where we are driving solar powered cars mm. living in solar powered houses living in solar powered houses i mean whereby you go to you 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 look at a building and you see you know all this ugly cladding that we have that is blue or green or whatever mm. and all of that is that is panels panels mm. thin film panels that are generating energy to power this, that building and people are actually selling yes uh, and yes, and because of the net metering, yeah. people are actually, mm. you know, uh, selling power back to, 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 to the grid provider. So let's talk about your organization because you've given us quite interesting background in the whole energy. And I know it's a very vast subject. We can't yes. even cover it. True. Your organization at the moment, where is your focus? Is it on training is it on providing the solutions is it both of those things yeah so so what what we're trying to do um, as enamast is to do two things mm. is to provide the training mm-hmm. because in, in this training does it also include the sensitization yes. of, of people of yes. masses right so sensitization is not it's it's not really for masses mm. it's really specific mm. because 
what happens is when I get to meet, uh, say, people in the tea industry, yeah. who I have, I, have, I, have, I have had the opportunity to meet, mm. I I am there to to understand mm. and have them appreciate what this technology can do for them, mm. because I know their challenges. Mm. I have had the opportunity to go and do power audits at some of these places and I'm able to see what their inefficiencies are Mm -hmm. and where they're really, really hemorrhaging in terms of energy. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to give them an informed discussion. I'm able to to give an informed discussion and Mm -hmm. educate them that, look, Mm -hmm. this is is out there. These solutions are out there. You know, yes, it's happening already. Mm -hmm. Um, We have the benefit of, 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 of of our neighbors in mm-hmm. Kenya here, mm-hmm. where quite a number of industries have really, really deployed these solutions. Mm-hmm. So I have some reference points there. We have a few that have taken it up here. Mm-hmm. So we have some reference points that I can, you know, pick on and say, look, see, go and, go and in, give them a call and, and find out exactly how, how they're doing. How they're doing. Yeah, and, uh, uh, is it serving them yes, or what? Yes, exactly. And then the other thing, the main thing that we... we, we, we we get that we, that we do is to provide tailored solutions. Yes, tailored solutions. It's not like off the shelf. Someone is buying something and then just come, come and in, put it on their roof and <laughs> exactly. You, you 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 have to find out, like you said earlier, their inefficiencies. You have to find out their needs. Yes, and you have to map out map up a, a tailored solution for a particular situation. Correct. That's what you guys do. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's what we do. That's exactly what we're we're trying to you know to to do for as, as many people as we can, regardless of whether it's an industry, a commercial mm-hmm. building. So we go in and we look at, you know, how they use their energy we, and then we we come up with, you know, tailored solutions to say, look, this is where uh this is where you're losing. This mm-hmm. is where you're inefficient. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. in cases, in some cases, we have, we have, we have looked at at, at the way people are building, mm. and told them, okay, uh, or, or gone into, say, a hotel setting and said, uh, why are all the lights in mm. all the corridors mm. on all the time? Mm. Do you know that you have? Occupancy sensing technology mm. out there. Mm. The laboratory toilets are on all the time, mm. and you might think it's not such a huge cost, but, but over time, over time, mm. it's mm. going to hit you. Mm. And why don't you look into simple technology like occupancy sensing, mm. so that when we when when the sensor detects someone. someone the light goes on. The light goes on. Mm. Simple things like that. Mm. Simple things like that. Like you know, if showing them that look, as much as you want to keep running, mm. because say uh, you have started, you, you you have switched on the motors and everything on the plant uh, at a particular time, mm-hmm. and you're going into. And you're having to stop at 8 p.m. Mm. Those two hours, mm-hmm. the way you consume your energy, the two hours between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. that mm. are coming at the peak rate mm. are costing you the same mm-hmm. as four hours mm. on shoulder. Mm. Is there a way in which you can become a little more efficient mm. and cut out those two hours? Mm. And squeeze everything within within the, the w- shoulder within hours. Within the shoulder hours, yeah. Huh? Mm. So that you are not hit by that, you know, by that by that cost of, mm. of working into into mm. into that that period, which mm. is at a higher mm. rate. Mm-hmm. So those kinds of things, and saying, look, we can design solutions for you that are going to give you a fifty percent reduction on the energy using the shoulder, and if you have reduced 50% of your energy in the shoulder and shoulder takes about 60% of your energy straight away you're saving 30% on your on your global energy mm. uh, consumption mm. and this is energy you're generating for yourself mm. meaning after you pay off the system 
all those savings are coming back to you mm. which you can plow back into whatever else you want to do you want mm. to expand the plant you want to do that kind of. so those are the kinds of uh, uh, trainings we're doing and, and solutions that we're tailoring for, 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 for our customers yeah. in your opinion how many guys need this technology how many people need this innovation um, I think everybody in industry does yeah so you're looking at maybe 50 to 100,000 mm. people who are out there running, you know, they have a commercial structure, they, they have, you know, uh, a small industry. That, 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 that is what, that is, that is what I see. That is what I see. Cause there's How quite, about, uh, homes? Yes. Homes, offices, offices, yes, offices, yeah. offices, especially commercial offices, commercial yeah. buildings, and that kind of thing. Yes, yeah, that is very much on our radar. Mm. Homes, we had not we because we wanted because we are looking to carve out a niche mm. that is for Enamast specifically. Mm. We are not really uh, targeting the to, homes. The homes. But there is a need there. Yes, the someone need, else can. Yeah, can, uh, yeah. It is a need that there. is being serviced by by quite a number of, of, of players out there. Yeah, and so yes, we yeah we can point you to the right, mm. to, to to the most professional mm. people that you can get a good offer from. But really, that's not a space that we want to 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 put a lot of focus on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Fine. So, in case uh, someone wanted to get to Harold and uh, get the services of Enamas. Yes. Uh, where do they get you? How do they find your credibility? Stuff like that. Have you done work for some guys that you can be able to... You've been mentioning coffee. Yes, we are partnering with a, a couple of uh, tea, pla- tea, tea, tea factories Yeah. to do their systems. Uh, should be up and running by end of the year. Okay. Uh, we are also partnering with a couple of uh, people who have commercial buildings here in Kampala. Yeah. And so those systems, we are also trying to target to have them uh, up as well mm-hmm. uh, very soon. Mm-hmm. We are partnering with uh, a company called Aria Finergy. Mm-hmm. Uh, based out of uh, Kenya, yeah. that have done quite a number of similar projects. Mm. They completed a project for. Um, they completed a, a, a couple of projects here for. In Tinda and Matuga, mm. for this company that does uh, plastics. Yeah. Uh, I forget the name. Okay. Yeah, so we've, we've, we've partnered with them because they have the capacity mm. and they have they they have done this quite a while. They have the experience. So 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 we want to hit the ground running and yeah. and, and and so that we definitely we, we are not looking to just come and say oh now we are we are trying out with you. Mm. No 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 no. We are not so guinea pigging. Yeah, people. we are not guinea pigging people. <laughs> we are we are moving with people who have done yeah. this uh, for years. Yeah. And so that's why Aria Finergy is one of our uh, reference points, mm. and, uh, and 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 we can we can we, we, we have we have a relationship with them. Mm. Yeah. So how does someone get to you uh, or to Enamast? Yes, uh, Enamast. You can get us through uh, our site. Mm-hmm. Uh, still under development, but the contacts are there. It's mm-hmm. Enamast UG. E- how, how do you spell E N E R M A S T U G dot com mm-hmm. uh, the contacts are there my contacts are also uh, available there you can drop us uh, an email you can drop us mm-hmm. a call mm-hmm. and we'll definitely be able to to get back to you and mm-hmm. and, 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 and and take forward this discussion yeah. in a nutshell how, how does uh, assuming I get in touch with you uh, what are normally the next steps so the next steps is for us to understand um, what your needs would be yeah, so you have to come on so site. So we have to come on site. Um, in some cases um, where we have not had the privilege to to come 
to get onto site quickly, mm. we get as much information from, say, the, the energy bills and that kind of thing mm. to give us, you know, a sense of what we're dealing with. Mm. And then we start and do uh, some simulations. Mm. And then after doing, say, uh, a proposal, then we prepare the proposal, mm. uh, depending on what what you're looking to do. Your proposal, uh, for the most part, will show me how much I'm going to save, yes. what I'm going to maximize. Basically, it's, your, your solution is cutting the costs for yes. and making me efficient in terms of energy Exactly. Usage. So what, what we're trying to do is to optimize mm-hmm. the use, your energy use, to give you as much value for your dollar as, you, as, as we can. So we really want to see that you get to value mm. for what you're paying out. Mm. Because it's extremely painful for you to be paying 50 million, 70, 80 million in a member mm. and it's only available 70% of the time. Mm. So meaning that where you are, you, 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 you are, you are paying umeme because the rates are good, Mm. Because the availability is not there, you have to engage mm. the generator, mm. which is coming at a huge cost. Mm. First of all, buying the generator. Buying the generator. Then the fuel. Then the fuel has been going. Exactly. Mm. So that's 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 really what what we're trying to do. We're trying to 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 get people to have some some sort of energy independence. So one final question. Now that we're talking about energy independence, mm. can Solar be one hundred percent trusted. Omeme is load shedding. Mm. Can solar be like load shedded also? Is there especially in these regions of ours? So, what happens is, and I I got to learn this from uh, some Swiss partners that uh, that I engaged a while ago. Mm. Because I also had. I didn't have the full appreciation that it is only sunlight that is required. Mm. Because I talked about now all this, how about cloud cover, how about mm. the rainy days, how about... So they said, look, we have deployed systems in the, in the Alps and we have winter and we have hours on hours without the sun showing up. But the power works. But... The systems work. So how about you guys <laughs> where the sun is around all year round, they will definitely work. And they have actually been you know, seen to work. Because what happens is you might get you will get a small reduction in what you're harvesting. Yeah. Which is understandable. Mm. But you still have the energy. Mm. You still have the energy. There will be a small reduction because of the, the you know the weather conditions, the cloud cover and that kind of thing. But in totality mm. you will actually get your value. Mm. Yes. Awesome, awesome stuff. So <clears throat> at the end of the day, um, solar can be trusted to work as much as possible. Yes. So the other reason why There has been a big mistrust of solar, mm. especially in our market, mm. is because many people who got into solar, mm. many of the people who got into solar initially, uh, got in to make a quick buck. Yeah, not to offer value and solutions to people. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, what they realize, they're like, okay, there are people up country who are in darkness, let's go and get some. Lamps from China and some panels. And I'm telling you, they have done that, my friend. They have really poured those things. Exactly. Yeah. So they've poured very low quality products on the market. Mm. And even the installations have been very poor. Mm. Because it's one thing to have a poor product. Mm. I can install it well and maybe it will work Mm. for a while. But Mm. you have unqualified, poor product, poor installation, installation, Mm. and zero support. 
So then things are dying after months. Yeah. The people who gave them the systems are nowhere to be found. There's no support. There's nobody to call when something has gone wrong, or, you know. And so you have all this frustration and people thinking, no, no, that that technology don't tell us about it. Mm. You know, it's, it doesn't work. Mm. So that's that that's where we are coming from now. Yeah. Because we have we have we have we have we have received a lot of that feedback. Mm. You know, when you're interacting, with, yes, with interacting with prospects, with, with prospects so yes, saying yeah. no, 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 that that stuff doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So we have an uphill task to, to climb, yes. to change the perceptions that people have and so on. We do, but we, we know we shall get there. Okay, cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the close of today's uh, episode. We've been talking to Harold, who is, uh, is founder, CEO yes. of Enamast, uh, an energy innovating company that uh, is giving solutions for alternative energy, which is clean energy, which is yeah. solar and is doing it in a different way than what you have been exposed to of recent. So get to his website, as even he's uh, told us, and uh, find his contact. And uh, as you grow in your business, in your venture, think alternative energy, think solar. And also at the back of your mind, you might be driving a solar-powered car soon enough. True. Until another time when we are having another discussion on innovation and uh, technology, I wish you all the success that you're willing to work for. It's from me here. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.